one of my pet peeves is being lit. I don't like being lit. Ask my wife. I fucking hate being lit. If I arrange to be somewhere, I am there on time. I am there even earlier. That's just the makeup of me. So when I arranged this morning to be at a certain location with the guy I'm fishing with today, I had to pull out on the road and say, gonna be an extra 15 minutes, dude. Cyclists. Lycra clad fuckwits cycling six abreast on a country road. Cyclists. Not an option or an opportunity to overtake the pricks. Cycling at slow, slow, slow. Anyway, let's get that intro rolled. Let's get some fishing done. So here we are, let's try and get the, uh, the sun out of your eyes and into mine, which is always good. Spot a feeder fishing, let's see what turns up. A few moments later. Today we're across the border in County Cavan, Leitrim even, doing a spot of fishing on Lake McNeen. You've seen me fish here before. Catching some roach, not long started. Today's responsible adult is Steve, he's just over there. He's been catching roach a chuck. Well, you've had one decent hybrid. I'm just starting to get into the roach now. And they're all about that sort of size. Perfect condition fish. I doubt the liver I've actually seen a, seen a hook before, some of them. The bait is simple. Red maggots on the hook. I've got worm and castor and corn there. A, a mix of uh, sonia baits, uh, sweet skimmer, which is like... It smells like custard creams. You know the old biscuits, the custard cream biscuits? It smells like them. And it's actually... I've mixed it with some Census Aramix Brasm just to try and pull bream in. There is bream in here. Just trying to pull them into your, sw into your swims, the fun bit. I mean, we're dealing with a large body of water. The bream could be anywhere. You know, weather-wise, it gives it to be overcast or sunny intervals. So it should be a good day. The temperature should be 16, 17, so it shouldn't be that warm, which isn't so bad because if you look into the side, the margins here, you can see massive algae blooms as have obviously happened here. So you kind of want to be fishing not really in algae blooms. Fishing about 35, maybe 40 metres, I haven't really, done, I haven't really checked. I've just basically chucked out to the first spot and said, fuck it, that'll do, and clipped up. Seven seconds for a 30 gram feeder to hit the bottom from the, from the impact. So it's not that deep here, but the fish are obviously in because we're catching them. I'm going to spin you around so you can see the place. And Steve is in. I 
Is it better this time or is it just a roach? The fish are obviously in because while you were watching Steve play one there, I had a wee skimmer. That brings today's grand total so far up to four fish. So I'm going to cut the bit back in there because if they keep coming in that sort of quick, we should have a good bit. Well, it's not been bad. I've had a bream. Woohoo! Bream! It's not the biggest bream, but it's still a bream. Still catching kind of regular. It's kind of good though. Nothing big though, but it's a good day of throwing feeders. It's always nice when you come somewhere and you actually start to catch fish. Wind has changed, but it's for mana. Give it five minutes, or not for mana, it's... Give it five minutes, the wind will be going the other direction. That might be why I wasn't getting any bites in that one. Had a bit of a tangle. Those maggots look good. It's good just to be fishing again. I don't like fishing in the like the, the, the when we had the daft heat. I don't like fishing like that. I'm amazed that there's still pike guys out fishing. I'm amazed that there's still guides taking people pike fishing. You know, summer temperatures when it's like in the mid twenties and there's still people fishing for pike. I know there was a couple of guys that said, uh, no, I ain't doing any more guides until the weather gets back to like a normal temperature. It's something that surprises me about like fishing in this part of the world. For a while there, it seemed like, you know, there was, well, there's one example where, that I know of where a guy was taking people out, he was guiding people on his boat, and he was saying he's able to guide people every day except like a certain day of the week. And one of his mates posted underneath that, was that the day that you sign on the dole? And he just replied laughing. And it's like, okay. So you've got a guy like that there, and I'm kind of wondering how much sort of insurance would he have? How safe would anyone be going out with him? But at the end of the day, it's up to yourselves. If you trust somebody like that, you want to go out, then crack on. Yeah, those maggots need replaced. This place is easily a lot lower than it should be. Really shallow. I think the last time I was here, the water was just level with the jetty that I'm sitting on. Now it's, <laughs> it's a lot further below it.
because I'm getting kind of bites on the drop, I kind of don't put the rod straight into the rod wrist. Rod wrist. Just kind of hold it. To, you know it's on the bottom. Give it a second. It's easier to hit the rod, hit the bite if you're holding the rod. So what's new and exciting in the world, eh? Well, I see during the week there was a bit of a story with the Royal Air Force. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that I was in the Royal Air Force. You know, quite proud of that. I kind of don't uh, see any problem with me saying that. I served my country. I'm very proud of that. I'm a patriot. But I seen a news story where the Royal Air Force, or the guy in charge of the Royal Air Force, he's had some sort of mental breakdown. That's the only way I can describe it. Or he's given to this whole woke fucking far left shit. Where he's basically froze uh, white men from being recruited in the military, the Royal Air Force. And I didn't really believe the newspaper when I, it was actually Sky Sports, Sky News when I seen it. Didn't believe Sky Sports or Sky News. So I phoned a mate that's working there. He works in a place called Strike Command at High Wickham. And he basically said, yeah, this is what happened. So the group captain in charge of the recruitment cell basically said, fuck this, I'm out. She quit. So now there's a power vacuum or a space where the recruitment community are now expecting a yes person to be put in there, be it a female or a male. So they've basically frozen straight white men out of joining the Air Force. Now that's a, that's a silly plan. Let me explain why it's a silly plan. The majority of the armed forces, all of the armed forces, tends to be made up of straight white working class men. Now that's not saying that there's no gays, there's lots of gays. That's not saying that there's no women, there's women. That's not saying that there's no other minorities, you know. There is. There is minorities. And this isn't a rant against any of the minorities. You know that I served with guys from all over the world. Let me just unhook my little skimmer here. And then pull the hooks out of me. I served with guys from all over the world and I never had an issue with them. Come on. Fucking about. So, it's not a rant. You know, I'm not doing the whole white, white is right shit. I'm not doing that. What I am saying is, this is, I think so this is like, there's laws against this, isn't it? It's like discrimination or some shit. Where you can't, uh, you can't discriminate in somebody based on their skin colour. So I don't understand why this has been tolerated. You know, typically, white working class people that join the military might not have come from the best backgrounds. The reason they joined the military is to get away. They joined the military to see the world, to, you know, have a job that pays well, have a lifestyle. Some of them even join because they don't have that good at a family and they want to basically go somewhere and, you know, find friends, make friends. I know when I joined the forces, this is way back in 1999 or, I enjoyed 
the fact that I was getting away from Northern Ireland because growing up in Northern Ireland in the 90s sometimes it was hard you know there was a lot of shit to deal with here so getting away to the military the Air Force offered me a chance to to escape all the bullshit of this place Now they've said it's a it's a freeze on white men, which I think is basically racist. If I'm honest with you, I think it's also uh, a real problem. How you meant to maintain the operational capabilities of the military when you're cutting off your nose to spite your face by taking away the biggest demographic that supplies your people. I mean, it's not, don't, it's not about the queen and the country shit. It's not about that. That plays a little part, but it's not about that. The big part for me was the, the fellow that was on the left-hand side of me and on the right-hand side of me. I didn't want to do something to let those guys down. I wanted to be a place where, where I wanted to be in a place where if I fell down, then there was going to be somebody on the left-hand side of me or the right-hand side of me that would step in and say, uh, let's give you a hand and get you back up. Teamwork. You know, the great thing about the military was it was it was a team. Nobody cared. Nobody cared whether you were tall, short, gay, straight. I mean, they didn't care. As long as you did your job, nobody gave a shit. I don't understand why we're pandering to identity politics. I don't understand why that's even been a thing. I don't even understand why why people in charge are, are doing this shit. You know, you're you're pandering to people who'd never, never in a million years will join the military. You're pandering to far left lunatics like that pre preach this shit. And none of them will ever join the forces. You know, they're happy to live under the freedom that the armed forces provides, but they'll happily look down at them and sneer at them. You know, oh, we don't want to be that. So you're never going to recruit those people. You know, so who else would you want to recruit? You know, like it or not, the UK is a country where predominantly white people live here. You know, it's like 82% of the nation is white people. So it stands to fucking reason that your recruitment is going to be mostly white people. You know, I, I'll give you a perfect example. I served in the Air Force and there was a, he was a very devout fella who was a, who was a fan of, a fan of old Allen and his snack bar, shall we say. Very devout. And to everyone looking in, he seemed to have a crutch. He seemed to use that as like a, a get out of jail card, you know? Dodge duties, dodge doing things because he would produce this I'm a Muslim thing. And nothing was ever said because, well, you know, that's discrimination. And he played that card every fucking time to a T. The same fella we caught in a bar in Lincoln, you know, drinking beer. The same fella actually ended up leaving the military. Because they wouldn't promote him. Now that's not every Islamic guy in the forces. That was one arsehole. And you get arseholes, you know, matter what religion they are. But that guy just seemed to make make life difficult for everyone around them. So who are you going to recruit? You're going to try and recruit people that don't fucking respect the UK, don't want to be part of the UK, and you're going to ask those people to then stand up and fight for the UK? That's not going to work. I have nothing against women in the military. Nothing at all against women in the military. But there's only certain jobs that women can do in the military. Regardless of these fucking crazy feminists that tell you women can do everything... 
There's certain jobs that women just can't do. And that's not a slight against women. There's certain jobs that women are better at than men. This is about understanding your differences and making the best of them. Come here, you. So that was, that was the whole, the Air Force is becoming woke. It kind of sickened me. There was another one where there's, there's people saying about pronouns and other little shit. Well, to me in the military, the pronouns were quite simple. And it was quite simple across all three branches of the military. Your pronouns were your rank followed by your surname. That was your pronouns. You know, nobody fucking cared what you were, whether you whether you were pretending to be a fucking dinosaur or a fucking whatever that day. Your pronouns were your rank and your surname. It was a simpler time back then. You know, nobody pandered to anyone's mental illness. I keep referring to the old story of if I knew somebody that was crazy and they thought that they could fly. And if I took them to the top of a building and says, on you go, son, show me how good you fly, and they jumped off the building and killed themselves, well, then I'd be done for manslaughter or murder, possibly. So I think the people that are, at this point in time, chopping off little bits and pieces from children, trying to convince them that they're something they're not, I think eventually those people, they'll be uh, in a world of hurt, But that's enough talking shit about the mentalness of the world. Let's enjoy the fishing. Somebody's doing a bit of shooting. I'll not see it in the camera, but I chucked the ball of ground bit on on a bit of a rock in front of me, and it is absolutely alive, a little fry about that size. And they're just going around the edge of the rocks here. That would be this year's fry. It's a bit of a weird one, but for every thousand of those little fish that's this size, you know, I, th I think every thousand of them is only something like 50 of them that survive to like next year. Or something like that. The numbers are crazy because they just get at by everything. They are just food for everything. I think it was a little knock there. No, I missed that one. 20 minutes later. Steve's into the bream now. Or rather he's, he's had two of them and I've had one of them. Been catching fairly steady. I think I'm up to 30 something fish now. Still using these Cresta jail feeders. Really good, you can cram the top of them full of particles because there's that plastic lid on them and then plug the bottom of the ground bit. I've also changed to a shorter hook length. I went to three foot, but I think it's seven pound fluorocarbon to a size 10 hook, yeah, a Guru feeder special. Been catching on a mixture of worm and maggot, but I'm just gonna put, I think it's five red maggots in this. Somebody is definitely getting rid of some rabbits off their land today. 
So I've heard a shotgun, shotgun, shotgun. Too early for pheasants or anything else. It's not clay pigeons because you'd hear them a lot more frequent. My marker in the distance is uh, a lot of trees on the top of a hill. You're not going to see it. The only issue I'm having with this place at the minute because the water is so low, there's a right old drop for the fish are hitting the, the bottom, so you're kind of having to throw, reach down into the keep net to throw them into the water. With the bigger fish you're just using the landing net, just put them in the net and dropping them in. It's been a good day so far. I've enjoyed myself. Nice weather. I do wish that stream behind me would be a bit, a bit, uh, a bit quieter, because it's making me want to take a piss. <laughs> I've also got a pike sitting in front of me. There's a little rocky ledge just in front of me, and every now and then when I'm bringing a fish in, it comes up and takes the fish away. It's tagged a couple of fish, so I'm not sure whether they'll survive. Ooh. But if they don't, they'll get used, they'll get took away and put in the freezer for the winter. <sighs> Nothing to get wasted. Looking forward to this winter's pike fishing. September, we're coming to the end of August. Start, we're going to be into September soon. And September's a bit of a strange month for me. Because September, typically, the, the better quality bream and the urn tend to come out. And you're making the decision when to stop the bream fishing and start the pike fishing. It's a good break as well because you know if you if you fish for something you know for the whole spring and the summer, you get kind of. Uh, not bored of it, but you kind of would look for look forward to a change. So I'm looking forward to the change, going to the pike. Just getting a little nibble here. Fish number 32. Woohoo! Fish number 32. Yeah, 
those maggots need to be swapped. I don't know if I've told you, but there's a whole shoal of little pitting for ice swimming around here. I'm sure that's what's keeping the, the pike well fed. That's what I mean. The feeder keeps all the particles. I guess it's full to the full to the brim with a little cut with casters, and then it's just the bottom that's plugged with ground bit. So the ground bit'll hit the feeder hit the bottom. It's only 30 gram feeder, but they do them up to like 60 gram, I think. I'm not sure. I know I have them to like 60 gram. They probably do them heavier. I'm getting bites in the drop. That was a really good bite, but I don't think there's anything on it. If it is, it's very small. Nope, nothing. are fine. I'm going to give them a little blast of something to put a little bit of smell in the water. I quite like these little sprays, they're made by mainline and you just give your, this is pineapple but there's toffee and there's chocolate orange and there's all sorts of other flavours it's just to add a bit of a scent there we go it's just to add to a little bit of scent to the bit Sort of a change because if the bit's going in the same as the same, like all day, the same sort of bit, something with a little bit of difference, like a little spray of that there, might just kind of perk the interest. I had a pike again. <laughs> Guru hook taker is brilliant. They don't like the heat though because they bend. Oh. At least we're catching fish. Later. Well, it's just gone about five o'clock. 
it's just gone about five o'clock and my knees and my back are screaming at me from sitting all day in a seat box so I think it's about time to pack up and go home I will pack down the gear and then we'll see what we have in the keep net I kind of stopped counting at about 40 fish so it's been an alright day I know I've had one decent bream well that's been the biggest fish of today has been a bream and a whole well the, the pike managed to take off quite a few fish I'm sure that's going to be fat dumb and happy just like myself so let's get the gear put away the van loaded and then it's home and cold beer time got to love a cold beer on a nice day that's what we've met a fish mate. Some fucking lovely hybrids in there. Yeah, it was good. I didn't see them coming in. No, it was at this point Mr. GoPro decided not to work no more. So here's a picture of the fish that I managed to catch that day. And toast crumbs in my beard. It was a good day. Uh, I stopped cut the, the tick. I have, a, I have a clicker, and then the my seat box where I basically asked like every fish that I catch, you press the clicker, and after a while, I kind of got bored and stopped pressing it. So it was about forty something fish. It was a good day. Hopefully, the pike are that easy to find when I actually start to go pike fishing. But apart from that, it was nice to be back fishing again. I want to tell everyone who's watched the video to this far, thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, do me a favor for the YouTube shit. Drop me or drop me a big fat like, as the fucking YouTube professional types say. If you could like, share, or even if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out, guys. I'm not going to pester you, I'm not going to try and sell you shit, it's free, doesn't cost anything, and yeah, I am looking forward however to getting the pike rods back out, I'm at, I am at that point where I mentioned the go pike fishing again, but if you'd want to help me out, then uh, like the video, share it with your mates, and if you're not subscribed to the channel, then subscribe to the channel. There's also a Kofi thing in the in, in the, uh, the the description box. You don't have to send me money for a pint, but if you do, thanks very much. Apart from that, I want to say uh, tight lines to everyone that's out. Hopefully. I'll now get back to doing more regular videos. There's actually another one I've got to upload after this one. Uh, but, you know, working full time, wife, child, trying to find spare time to do all of this stuff is, is always a challenge. Um, it's like a perfect example. I was asked by someone, would I uh, like do teaching, do guided stuff, like teach somebody how to fish? And it's a friend of mine. So I would, I would take them out and I would fish with them, yes. But I get asked a lot, would I show someone how to fish? And it's like, I don't really want to start doing angling guiding stuff. I don't really want to start doing tuition stuff. Because I only get like, maybe at the most, four days fishing a month. So if I was to take people out, then I would end up having to... Um, knock my own fishing on the head to try and be the the, the, the the guy that's teaching someone else now i'm not saying if you if you if people see me out and they ask me questions i'm not going to say you know piss off i wouldn't do that but what i am saying is you know i would love to have the time where money wasn't a problem and i could turn around and say yeah yeah sure come to this venue at this date and this time and i'll be here and i'll help you out uh I would love to be able to do that, but at the minute it's just time just isn't on my side here at the minute. I've got, you know, a lot of stuff happening outside of YouTube, so 
whilst I'm, I'm honoured that people are asking me to help them out that way, I just can't physically get time to do it. So, it's something that's kind of been, something that's popped up. It pops up more kind of uh, with regard to the pike fishing side. But, again guys, I, I, there's really one of me. I have to, like I work like, you know, from like, 8 o'clock through to 6 o'clock every Monday to Friday. Uh, you know, <laughs> I can't just not come home and spend time with my wife. You know, I can't not spend time with my child. I cannot, I'm lucky to get maybe one day a week where I can get away for a few hours fishing. But at least I'm getting the one day away fishing, which is great. So until next time, trips. Tight lines.